Today, I commit a sin. So, hear me out here. I signed an agreement in blood to always defend the Little Mermaid after I got into my show. So, tonight, I will be going to see the new live action Little Mermaid. I have been scared of this for like the whole time since it was being announced, so about a year. And, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I am not ready for this. But, I have to get ready for it, so let's go get ready for it. Alright, here we go right here. I think we got a good outfit going on right here. Looking good, huh? But, the most important thing about this, is that you make sure this works, so let's test it. Out there. Oh. Maybe if I tuck that down. About oh, shit. Uh, so you guys can see if it's not blocking in the fucking way. Hold on. All right, I think I found a better and more efficient way. Get you guys in there. Pop socket down. See my nice little baby right here. So, everything should be good. Uh, I'm pretty circuitous. Let's get it. You know, I switched it to my pocket to be a little more inconspicuous, but then all of a sudden the camera cut out when I did. So, you know, I didn't get to get footage, but that's fine. I had an embarrassment at the concession stand that we can all forget about, I'll never tell you. Anyway, um, sitting there in an empty theater, ready and eager to see this movie and also get to the trailers the barbie movie trailer was fantastic holy shit that movie's gonna be good then um this at the beginning of the uh movie when we finally got to it oh boy i'm gonna have a lot to talk about sitting there on the toilet ton of popcorn to process notepad in hand i am ready you know it's quite disappointing the movie was this close this close to being at least mid but then um something broke that train and made it uh made it the worst rating so yep you know as i'm walking home i have so much to talk about so many things i want to say about this while it's still fresh in my mind i'm just gonna say one thing the one part that i said it gets makes it worse makes it even worse than mid um okay maybe i can't explain something so it's something new one number two it includes aquafina number three it's unbearable it is unbearable i literally almost vomited it was terrible so better be prepared for me to explain that I think I'm lost. This uh, this is bad. I think I'm more lost than I did when trying to figure out what the movie's plot was about. Okay, never mind. It's just up there. Thank fuck. I will say one thing. This movie was not what I expected. So going into this, I had a lot of thoughts, mainly some negative ones. But the one negative one is this just solely it's not gonna work thanks to the lighting the energy just everything was just felt so different in the trailers that still translated but not as bad as i thought so here i have my notes here you can see little mermaid review 2023 if you can read my chicken scratch so here we go we are going to start off with number one here um Yes, they have a new Disney intro for live actions. This is very mid, middle of the road, solely because um, it looked cool, it was nice, but it just means that we're gonna get more live actions, which that's obviously bad. Whole thing here to take, just from anything about what I'm gonna talk about is live actions never work, or well, maybe they could have. I'll explain more at the end, but Live actions will never work. So they need to stop doing this and they really just need to focus on their main projects. Disney forgets 
how they became so big in the first place. It was originality. It was bringing storytells to life. And um, here, they're just reimagining their classics. No signs of life at all. And all their main stuff, all their new stuff, they're putting no focus on it, making it bad. So they're putting too much focus onto this, and then all the main stuff, nothing. So that's one of the bads, number one. So that's the first one. Prince Eric's mom is alive, which is very weird, but it gets a little worse when I explain more, but this is my first thought when I heard them talking like uh, the queen or your mother, what, what would your mother think of this? I'm like, oh, what? why is she alive? So that was my first thought. And then um, the change of names and also just, it just felt weird, the energy with um, Ariel's sisters. Every sister had a different name, every sister, just felt different and there was this whole weird plot about this uh, coral moon that went absolutely nowhere absolutely nowhere so it's it's so weird right the sisters apparently are outside of trident and apparently they went off to go do their own thing but they come back every coral moon and it's just it's never explained why it's never explained the purpose of this coral moon or why it's so important so that's um a weird new original thing that went nowhere. Um, next one is Ariel had this um, weird swimming, right? So I, I think it was just one scene, but when she is swimming in the boat after getting chased by the shark, she's doing this. She is doing this while flipping her tail like forward, right towards her, which I f it felt weird. Why is she? Why is she going like this? Is she trying to swim backwards or? It, I mean, she already has her tail, so why is she doing this? That was just something I found weird. But then, uh, after that, she was talking about Scuttle. Apparently, Scuttle's a girl, which is a very weird change. Um, so, Scuttle's a girl. Okay. Not as bad as the species change, but I'll allow it. Um, Trident has a weird pronouncing issue. Like, he... I, I have this issue as well, right? Like, I kind of, like, muddle my words or something, and it just sounds weird. It has, like, a pinch of an accent towards it sometimes. He had that pretty much almost the whole movie, and his pronouncing just sounded so odd, and it just didn't work for me. Um, next one, Howie sang too much. Howie's singing was actually really good, and I'll say more good stuff about it later on. But when she's singing part of that world, she is going way too hard. She is going way too into it, which um, not only removes the characteristics of the song and making it sad and longing to go outside, but it also just made the song... Fuck you too, man. It's 10 o'clock. Anyway, it just made the song bad. It just made it snarly. It made it weird. It made it like... She was actually snarling. I felt sh like she was choking in there. So I think she like went a little too hard, but they liked that, that, but they also missed the parts where she's just like snarling and choking and just felt so weird. And um, yeah, I think that was the only mistake she had with her singing. The rest of it was pretty nice. Um, okay, I flipped a page by accident. Um, yeah, okay, same thing, Hallie's trying too hard. Um, oh, here we go. When Ariel goes to the surface for the first time, which is weird because, um, okay, whole thing on Scuttle here. Um, change is, um, really bad solely because his whole thing is that he's a scavenger, right? He is a scavenger, and he, that is why he has so much affiliation with human culture. That's why he's so into it. He's a scavenger. He takes stuff. He observes things. He is a scavenger but in this they make him a gannet for no reason or her and it, it's i think it's just solely for the underwater scenes but the one thing it really takes away is that it's like ariel doesn't go to the surface she's just like in the barrens of the uh, the shipwrecks and that they change that but um ariel doesn't go up to the surface and um meet with scuttle and stuff like that that was not there, and that's bad because it just doesn't feel right, per se. You know, you could say it's good, and I wouldn't blame you, that Ariel's first 
appearance on the surface is when she saves Eric. That's fine. But to me, it feels like there needs to be a connection there. There needs to be earlier premises when she goes on to land before she goes and saves Ariel. Or before she goes and saves Eric. So, that's my whole thing. But here's one very good thing. I almost fucking cheered when I heard this. They sung one of the musical songs. Actually, it might have been an original. Oh my god, I forgot. Anyway, they sung one of the good songs called Fathoms Below. They did a good job on it. And I, I almost cheered. I was so happy when they did that. It really gave some character to everything. And it just really worked with it. And I really was... Um, happy with that um here we go so back to eric's mother or queen um eric is adopted this is very strange so eric is adopted into the family which is incredibly weird right apparently he got stranded and like he he got stranded and he just basically was um brought into the uh, club and everything. So he's not even royalty and um, just everything. It's just so weird. It, it's a change that goes nowhere, by the way. Nothing happens with it, which is so odd. And it really like, kind of just takes away from this. So here's my whole thing as well. Because his mother is alive, adoptive or not, um, it also ruins Grimsby. Grimsby is a father figure. Because no one else is around, he has to step up to the plate. The reason why he wants him to get married so bad is to not only impress the king, but also impress his own ideals. He wants Eric to be happy solely because he is the father figure. He's like one of the only things left. But now he has a mother and apparently Grimsby is a prime minister. I don't know. She randomly says prime minister, which really made me go like, the fuck you call me or okay the fuck you call him anyway it, it just was so odd to me and um yeah um here we go they tried to make eric too close to ariel the problem with the little mermaid 2 is it's basically the same story but retold in her daughter's perspective and instead of uh her wanting to go on land she wants to go out to the sea right that's that's what the Little Mermaid 2 was. It was basically the same product, but changed. They did the exact same thing for Eric, which felt incredibly odd. And it just felt like, um, I don't know. So, so like, it, it gets even worse when he gets back and sees his mother and stuff like that. So, like, he's, like, stuck. He, he doesn't get to go often outside into the uh, world and see everything and like go on the seas and like so he's trapped on land she's trapped in water it's too on the nose they're trying to make them too close together oh they turned the shipwreck into the titanic i'm not even joking this is one of the weirdest changes i've ever seen so the original one and the play lightning strikes Makes the ship burst into the flames. Everyone's in a panic. It also, like, makes the ship break and everything. And it just works. It works, right? Well, trying to make it more natural. And it still kind of works. But I think I just... <laughs> I couldn't handle it. So, like... So he's, like, steering away from the storm, right? And then he, like, makes a big mistake. And he's heading right for a rock. It's way too on the nose. And then he crashes into the rock. It, <laughs> the lamps fall down and then burst the ship into flames. It's going down like the tide. It's so dumb. It is so stupid. And the acting here is terrible as well because they're acting like it's no big deal. Nothing's happening when their ship just burst into flames and it's breaking. So it's like, Eric, come on. Come on, Eric. They need to add oomph. They add, add emotion here. Like, Eric, hurry up. Get, get on. You're going to die. Stuff like that. They got to add more effect to it. And it just was not there. Here we go. One of the worst parts. Ariel, apparently no CPR. If you don't know why that's bad, then I have no hope for you. Ariel, the girl who was under the sea her whole life, knows how to give CPR to save people. What? How? Why? It gets even worse as we go on, but 
I almost died when that happened. Last part of Part of Your World was very good. It was very good. At first I was like, okay, Holly Berry's gonna go way too hard and it's not gonna work. Halle Berry going hard on that part, the last part of Part of Your World, was very well done. I really enjoyed that. That was a very good performance and yeah, she did a good job with that. Under the Sea has no life. It has no life to it. The thing about Under the Sea is that it's under the sea, right? You see the wonders of under the sea. All the animals come together to play a song for Ariel and let her know, hey, it's all good down here. For this one, they just go exploring while Sebastian is singing, right? You still got the animals, right? There's a couple ones, but the colors are just bland. Everything about it is just bad. Sebastian is horrible. The singing is just terrible. It's like he's an imitation crab of his personal old self, which is really upsetting to me. So the thing is, you need to have extra characters in the background singing because they are a part of it. The place play the bass. Where are the place? You're singing this while Ariel's riding fucking turtles. Where are the place? And then there's just like the newt play the flute. They're not there. Where are the newt? Everything is just gone. Nothing is there. It's just him singing which breaks it, it just breaks so much. Ariel joins in and all of a sudden knows the lyrics. How? Why? How, how does this happen? She is singing a song that is being presented to her for the first time and she's all of a sudden joining in on it? How is this possible? How is she singing like, uh, they got a lot of sand. Why? And also, why is she joining in? She wants to go up to the surface and then she does in a second. But she joins in and apparently knows, it just doesn't make sense. She knows the lyrics, she knows everything about it. It just makes no sense. Here we go. This is where it gets worse. Um, so Eric, it goes, it cuts to Eric. You get to see his adopted mother, right? And she's talking to him and all of a sudden, it gets suddenly incredibly political. Something about like, just like people, places and stuff and just like royalty duties. But it's not in the fun way. It's in a very political way. And it's just, no, no. I know I am almost 17, right? I can pick up on this stuff, I understand. But if you want this movie to be for kids, then cut it, cut it out, cut it out. The whole thing about The Little Mermaid is a special story. You don't need to get into the deep political stuff, the kind of darks about it, and it just, really took me out and even more and it just didn't work. A new Eric song. I really enjoyed this Eric song. The thing that was missing from Eric in the original, and I'll talk about this more on the end, is a song. A song for him. Like a song to give him character. The original Eric, believe it or not, doesn't really have much to him. He doesn't have much character. You don't get to know him. In the play, you do. You get to know him very well. He sings a lot of songs. He's very into the fact of finding Ariel while the other Prince Eric is wanting to find Ariel, but isn't doing much with it. I explained this very much so in my first Little Mermaid video after my play. And here though, um, with the new movie, he's into finding Ariel, but he gets to sing a really personal song too. And I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that they're trying their hardest writing or not it, it's just like they did try to give him character they he blew it, my socks off with that song that was one of the best parts of the movie right there the song prince eric got to sing was perfect it was so close to her voice it was very close to her voice from the musical it was very good right they also got political with the whole hating of land as well. For some reason, Trident, another reason why he hates the humans is that they uh, pollute the land. Apparently Ariel's trying to defend them, but they, they went on this whole spiel about polluting the land while Ariel's sisters, who she barely even knows, are in the background uh, admonishing her and like talking about like the, uh, the her defending the humans and shit like that. And it, it's just, so dumb, like, you don't need to include that. I get it, he doesn't like people. Okay, um, Melissa McCarthy, I fucking hate you. <laughs> I 
Melissa McCarthy is one of the worst actors in this movie, tied with Aquafina. Oh my fucking god. Melissa McCarthy was terrible. The way she is doing, like her acting and her scenes is just so, so bad. It is so bad. Like she is, you know what? She's trying her hardest and it just does not work. She, at one point she's trying to be sexy and it's just, no, no. It just does not work. Everything about what she did never worked. It was way too much, it was way too little, it was too um, snarly, it was too just on, on the nose bad acting. Melissa McCarthy, the fact you still have a job is incredibly insane. Um, Floatsome and Jetsome do not have lines. Why? Why do they not speak? These characters are important. They are important. They are very important to continue the plot. And what they do with them sooner is so stupid. Um, actually, I can say it right now. Instead of having him talk to Ariel to convince her to come with her to meet Ariel, they make a water projection of Ursula. Like, it's like a freaking Zoom call, like, <laughs> freaking Skype call. Just like everything about that is so stupid. They're like spinning and then like Ursula's through there. And I literally almost yelled out, what the fuck? But there were children behind me, so I had to be careful. And just... <sighs> Poor Unfortunate Souls was also terrible. The way Melissa McCarthy was moving, the way she was singing made me horrified. I wanted to run out of the theater and cry. I can't. New song, similar to, wait, is that it? Okay, I didn't have notes until um, she got it onto land. So when she got onto land, um, she had an intro song uh, when she got onto land, which is cool and similar to the musical with the song called Wildest Dreams. It's very close. It's got a lot more stuff to it though, like her like experiencing like walking around and stuff and um, yeah, it's, it's cool. I like it. I, I like that part. It adds a lot more character to it. Um, so it has some lines from the musical as well. It works out pretty good. But it's okay. It's it's fine. It's just I don't like Sebastian's voice. I don't know if it just was like too soft or just nothing there. But I don't like it. Um, right, here we go. Ursula put on a forget spell. Why was this done? So I'm just gonna tell you this right now. Hey, listen to me. This goes nowhere. Much like this whole Coral Moon shit, this shit went nowhere. The adoptive shit, nowhere. The Coral Moon shit, nowhere. This is even worse because the whole story is basically the same, but she doesn't know she has to kiss him. What's the point if you're gonna do the same exact story? It just does not make sense. And, like, what, what effect does that do? Either way, she can't speak saying, like, hey, kiss me. She is does nothing. She just all of a sudden forgets. It's just so weird. They have a on-the-nose um, thing about the Little Mermaid. Like, so it's, so, it's so weird. Like, he has, like, this Little Mermaid trinket. And I guess that's where the new name comes from. I don't know. And she gives it to, he gives it to her. And then she, uh throws it to the sea at the end or some shit. I don't know. It's just, it's a little on the nose and it's just like, okay, what are you doing, guys? There are new and cute scenes, much like the musical, that establish character. Here's the thing I don't like about the original. I like the original very much, but the one thing that is so bad is the chemistry. Ariel and Eric don't get to know each other. They go, they do a few things together and then nothing happens. Nothing from there really happens. Nothing from there makes you feel like, hey, they might be falling in love. The musical adds more to that. This, oh, to give it some credit, does even more. It does a lot of good stuff with the time it has and establishes their relationship incredibly well. And I was really proud of that. It's it just like, 
the scenes they do are natural. Everything about it is natural. Like her on the cart, you know, as much as she doesn't really make a mistake, or she makes a couple, but she steers clear away from it. So she didn't make a mistake. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, like everything from her, like cruising around the shops, from her going on the boat ride later on for Kiss the Girl, for her going on the card and everything, and just like everything about it was just great. And just like them, them talking more, them in the library talking, it just worked. It just worked out a lot, very well. Bad take on Scuttle's uh, scene in Kiss the Girl. It just made it really egregious and hard to watch with uh, Scuttle trying to... Um, Aquafina trying to create that iconic line from the musical and I think some parts of the original. I don't really remember. The original was like, uh, Sebastian's like, gotta create the right kind of mood and like, Scuttle's like, ah, like candlelight and shampoo. And it was a cute scene and like later on Scuttle's like, wah, 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 like trying to join in on the song. And I think he did that in the original too. But um, for this, Scuttle opens it, it's very annoying and it's just not charming at all. Aquafina's voice just makes it even worse. Um, so that was a bad take on that. Um, here is one of the worst parts, right? It is just so bad. All of a sudden, Eric starts talking about the constellations and how they lead the sailors. I'm fine with this. Eric being wanting to be a sailor and everything, that works for me. That, that works, that's literally his character, right? But Ariel is confused at first, so he goes on to explain. But then, all of a sudden, she knows who Ares is. She points up at the constellation, and then, like when trying to explain her name, and then all of a sudden, like, she knows Ares? She knows the constellations, even though she was just confused? What kind of writing is this? It goes from she doesn't know it, to she knows it. And this gets, um, this kind of ties up at the end when I get to that. So that was incredibly strange. Um, no life in Kiss the Girl. Um, it, it's okay that Sebastian, Scuttle, and Flounder are all singing it, right? You got Steve Buscemi Paschetti singing with them, right? You got Aqua da Fina singing with them. You got Imitation Crab, obviously. And that's fine, but... There also needs to be life with the animals there singing. Like, they need to be a part of it. And you just can't do it with three. You can't do it with one like they did for Under the Sea. No. No. Um, here we get to an even worse part again. Ursula's tentacles pull a freaking Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2. They're alive! They're fucking alive. The tentacles move around, they grab stuff for her, and it is just bad. Melissa McCarthy is awful, and it really makes me want to die. Her acting is awful, her screaming is obnoxious, and it makes me feel sick. I can't believe she got cast for this. It It's wild. Okay, um... Oh, here we go. The part I told you about that sunk this movie from mid to lower than mid. Here we go. Let's talk about it. Um, Aquafina. Aquafina. You can't sing for shit. Scuttle has a new song. Okay. Scuttle had a song in the musical. It was very good. At least when sung by the actor that played Scuttle in our musical, Megan. It was good, right? It, it was good, it was good. Like, the song is good, it's called Positivity, it's got a lot of life to it, and I really like it, right? This song, though, is screechy, it's bad, it is awful, it is childish, it is just terrible. And it's trying to be like Scuttle knows the gossip, right? That's kind of what I wanted to talk about from the beginning. Have you not heard that Scuttlebutt? Your butt. No, the gossip, the buzz, the who said what, who does that, yeah, the Scuttlebutt. Well, I was flying over. But because she is a Gannet, it does not work. You need Scuttle to be a fucking seagull for this to work. So that makes it even worse, but the song itself is so bad because Aquafina can't sing and the song lyrics are annoying. Everything about it is terrible. I think everyone in the theater behind me, in front of me, was just so confused and 
like, uh, not understanding what this is. It was just terrible. So, as that kept going on and Scuttle kept getting lines, I started to descend into madness. Oh my god, please help me. The Scuttle is unbearable. It, it just... Aquafina, holy shit, I don't like you. Um... So then we get to the uh, marriage scene, right? Um, I, w I was fine with the scenes after that. Like they did an okay job with Eric and um, like being brainwashed over um, Ursula and you know being a little confused. He didn't know what was happening and everything. So I, I like that. But um, the uh, they don't do the marriage on the boat though. They do it on the uh, castle, which makes it really weird when all of a sudden Ariel turns back into a mermaid and then Ursula changes back into a freaking octopus and then like literally yeets with her off the fucking cliff. They dive like 50 feet, land unscathed. It's just uh, not great. I said, kill me because Melissa McCarthy was still terrible. And then as we get to the final end here, um, here we go back to Ariel with everything with Ariel. Ariel, first, no CPR. Second, she doesn't make a mistake with the uh, the turning of the ship. Thirdly, she apparently knows the constellations. And finally, they changed the ending to which she maneuvers the ship to Ursula instead of Eric. Now, f fine, you, you want Ariel to be heroic, you want her to be a badass girl, but she already saved Prince Eric. She already saved people. She saved Flounder. She saved people already. Let Eric save Ariel. So it, it's a cycle. I saw a comment that was very good. It's a cycle, right? Ariel saves Eric. Eric saves Ariel. At the end of the day, they're always going to save each other because that's what a marriage is. It's got to be coincide with each other and saving each other's. So Ariel gets that moment, and I question after that, is she a Mary Sue? After going through this, yeah. How do you know the constellations after not knowing the constellations? How do you know CPR? And how do you just, like, not make... How do you not, like, crash with the carriage? It just doesn't work. Then we get into um, Eric gave up, which isn't in his character at all. So a new change is that they go their separate ways for a week, a couple days, however long afterwards, which is incredibly weird. I think Ariel just went back with uh, Triton solely because um, he sacrificed himself for her. But anyway, it led to him like warming up to the idea of her being alone. I liked it and don't like it. It was kind of like the musical, but it was a little bit less good because it wasn't coincided he just did it randomly while she wasn't watching so it just kind of felt cowardly and then um little on the nose about the message what i mean here is that um the message of the little mermaid is that um ariel should have a voice right at first she doesn't have a voice because she can't say anything about land because her father is too scared about um land and people and things and and fun he doesn't like any of that and he's not into it, right? And like, um, he kind of silences her and doesn't believe her about the outside world and she doesn't have a voice there. And then she physically gets her voice taken away from Ursula so she can't live on the outside world and like, um, get the life she wants. She needs to do it in different ways, right? She needs to do it in different ways and, um, do it like that but she doesn't have a voice physically but also she doesn't understand the outside world so mentally she also does not have a voice at the end though obviously she gets her voice back and she gets to live the life she wants but that but trident comes with the message in full on the nose straight up and head donks you with it like you did it, basically the line goes you sh oh you sh you shouldn't have taken your own voice for you you to be heard which Okay, you didn't have to say that to me. You made it a little more apparent enough throughout the film. It just... No. It just don't make it apparent to the audience. Just make them figure that out on themselves. Last and final thing is uh, the musical-like send-off. I really like this. So basically what happened was 
um, in the musical, you have all the sea creatures, you have all the mer other mermaids, you have Trident, and you have um, all the humans, characters and stuff, and um, everyone gets to have a great send-off, right? They get to say goodbye to Ariel as she's, um, well, actually, it's while she's getting married. There's actually that as well. She doesn't get married in this. Well, she does, but it doesn't show it. Which sucks, man. You can you can remake all this all you want, but you're not gonna you're not gonna fucking remake the boner priest. Come on, where's my boner priest, bro? Anyway, um, they don't do the wedding, which kind of sucks. But they do get a good send off. So like the mermaids and stuff in the musical are at the wedding and they're watching as Ariel and Eric are getting married as they're going off, right? But here they just send them off, which is very nice. I really like that ending. My final review after everything I saw, is that this movie was okay. It wasn't the greatest. It wasn't fantastic at all. It was nowhere near close to perfect, which is really weird that people are saying that. Um, but it's not awful. It's not completely terrible. It is bad. Don't get me wrong. It is bad. There is a lot of stuff here that is terrible about it. But the changes, some changes, not all, are very nice. And I really like it. So, where do I rate this? At first, I before the song, I was giving it a 5. Now, it is sunk to a 3.5 after Scuttle song. Thank you, Aquafina. You trashed this movie. Final thoughts. Um, high schoolers do it better, boys. And here's the thing. The Little Mermaid had a chance with the live action that no other film did. Adapt the musical. The musical has everything perfect. Everything is so much better. It has a clear storyline. It makes sense about what happened to her mother. It just works. It has um, Eric being actually really so into trying to find the voice. It has more characters. It has more characters and character to the already pre-existing characters. Art Malik. You did a great job as Grimsby, but wouldn't you like if you had a song? Wouldn't you like if you had moments of like giddiness and just being excited and just wanting to be a matchmaker and stuff like that? You could have gotten that, but they're trying to remake, they're trying to remake the original, which takes away from the fact that they could have remade the musical. Little Mermaid Live, sure, but Imagine, live action Little Mermaid, everything is new and original and it subverts expectations because it's the musical version. That could have been so much better. Everything, fine. Everything new, okay, leave that except for Scuttle's Change and a couple other things like the Coral Moon, fuck that. Everything, and, and, okay, now, now I'm really realizing how much bad shit is in this, oh God. Um and Prince Eric's mom and stuff like that. Everything, just leave it, cut it out, whatever. And just add the musical elements. You could have had a perfect movie that subverted all expectations. This could have been the movie that just like went from a flop to a bop if you did the musical version. But unfortunately, there's no chance of that now because of this coming along Aquafina, you know, ruining it. You got Halle Berry going too hard and then and then um calling out racism as the reason why the movie is not being liked even though the writing and um acting wasn't fantastic, especially from Aquafina and Melissa McCarthy. But you know what? You can even keep Halle Berry, but the story, the musical, it's perfect. You don't even need to include the songs. Positivity is a very hard song to translate, especially with Scuttle and the other sequels, like holding her up as she's trying to learn how to use legs, right? Maybe you don't even need to include that. Just include the story of the musical and it just works so much better and it just fits so well. It's just straight to the point it works. So yeah, anyways guys, um, uh, do I recommend you go see this movie? No, it's not worth it. It's not worth, um, $15 of mine. It wasn't worth um, $17 of concessions in total. Was that like $30? $32 in like um, concessions and um, the movie? Yeah, it, it wasn't worth it. Watch it on Disney when it comes out. But do I recommend you should see it? 
maybe give it a chance but at the same time it's never gonna be good and that's why the live actions need to cut out but this movie had a chance it lost it they could have done the musical and it could have worked i'm not saying this from bias well i am and i'm not but if they did the musical it could have subverted expectations it could have been good it could have been the perfect case of making a live action but they didn't do it so yeah that's everything um i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please like and subscribe and um yeah i'll see you guys in the next video peace out